people that be, like they uh, they hate the unvaccinated or people that are not pro vaccine mandate, government vaccine mandate, they hate them. And so in the event that and you've seen this, in the event that there's any story covered by someone that was either not or rather, let's say anti vaccine mandate or not vaccinated for any reason, any event that some of them get severely sick or worse, die. You see these guys start foaming at the mouth, right? They can't get enough of that. They love that. All the news organizations, uh, platforms, they love that. And, of course, there are people that are on the social media that, like, try to keep up with this. They love blasting those stories out. The, and, and that in itself, before I continue on, shows you that they don't give a shit about you. These guys try to paint themselves in this sort of very positive light. They like to think of themselves as the heroes, as the good people that care so much about people's health. And in the event that you disagree with them, they show you that they want you fucking dead. Okay, but that's not really the topic of conversation. I I preface that by saying I'm about to show you guys something about how ridiculous some of this stuff is. And when I show stories like this, that's why I wouldn't wish I wouldn't wish someone to be in severely sick um, really on anybody. I wouldn't wish that upon you. Um, definitely as it when it comes to your own health. But I do want to show you guys something. This is a story that came out uh, yesterday. And there's someone that has, I would say, part of the Branch Covidian cult. The ones that overreact uh, are very ridiculous. But also more so pointing to the fact that Look, I don't care where you're at on the subject matter of vaccines. I think now people have started con- to concede that the term breakthrough case was uh, was ill-advised. You should have never been using that because they were never these aren't breakthrough cases. They happen way too fucking often. And to be fair, a lot of people have just retired that anyway because we know that you can carry the virus. You know that you can get sick from it. Here's a story covered by Newsweek. There was a teacher who got three Pfizer shots uh, also that required masks in his classroom or their classroom, and now they're hospitalized with the COVID. Now, again, if you are even a vaccinated person, that's something that should, I would argue, bother you. Okay? Um, Because that's that's basically a concession that the vaccine doesn't work in a way that they told you that it worked. All right? it, It simply doesn't. So you take all of these precautions that they told you, specifically the one that was supposed to be the end all, and that was the jab, and it didn't stop you from being hospitalized, and it certainly didn't stop you from being COVID, to from getting COVID. Now these instances we're hearing a lot about these. You see places with these higher vaccination rates, and yeah, just by sheer mathematics, higher vaccination rates are going to equal higher people, uh, maybe testing positive for. Uh, it that are let's say vaccinated that's that just basic math but the idea it started even dr Rochelle Rochelle Walensky of the cdc would state that well when you get the jabs you're not getting covid these people aren't getting covid they aren't getting sick and then it switched sometime right it, it switched it went from that to well now it just stops you from getting hospitalized um, and it, 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 it basically is a symptom mitigator, right? It's therapeutic. It's more of, more of that. It's not even a vaccine in a classic sense where you're, it makes you immune from it. Like you get these shots. Some of you guys had definitely when you were kids, which is why I hate the term anti-vax vaccination, uh, or anti-vax because most people that are against, there's a lot of, I would argue most people that are against this particular, uh, against let's say vaccine mandates, have had vaccinations at some point, maybe not for COVID, but have had it at some point. So that's the false dichotomy. But this person took all the precautions and that, that dream that they sold them as it pertains to the vaccine, it simply didn't equal them, uh, getting those said results. Now, yeah, there's going to be those outliers, but it's not outliers anymore. It's happening too often for them to be breakthrough. Oklahoma man, I uh, said he caught COVID-19 while teaching at a college preparatory high school, despite receiving three shots of Pfizer vaccine and now and requiring uh, students to wear masks. No, neg- no negotiation, no discussion, put it on leave, put it on or leave the room. So this person uh, was pretty firm. This teacher said, if you're going to be in this school, 
or rather in his classroom, you have to have a, a mask or you're not going to be able to attend this classroom. Um, and this is a class about fucking algebra. And he said he uh, spoke with the newspaper from a hospital bed, and this was at Integris Baptist Medical Center, um, where he is being treated for complications from COVID. He's he's also old. He's uh, no, sixty two is older. It's not generally what we've been seeing of the people that have been really dying from it. But sixty two is up there. Sixty two year old te- uh, is a teacher at Harding Fine Arts Academy, a charter school in Oklahoma City, that now requires masks for all students. He said the policy was never in question for him where he applied my classroom, my rules. And, and, and and there's parents that know this and they're still allowing them to attend this school. That I think is a problem for another discussion. Uh, but just think about that kidney transplant 10 years ago left uh, hardly immunocompromised. So he has underlying issues. Let's be transparent about that which resulted in him taking extra precautions in regards to the coronavirus since studies have shown that COVID-19 poses a higher risk for people for uh, with immune uh, compromised immune systems. Harley said that due to the elevated risk for himself and for his daughter, who also needed a new kidney, he limited his exposure to people outside of work and his household. He said that no one else in his immediate family tested positive for COVID-19 at this time. The teacher first developed a fever before a scan uh, conducted at an emergency room showed pneumonia in his lungs and uh, subsequent tests found he had the COVID. Despite the hospital staff working hard to get him in a bed in the emergency room, Harley said it still required a 28 hour wait before one became open for him. He's currently being treated with uh, the antiviral medication uh rem desafir. i thought they said that that shit didn't work huh uh and, and sleeping with the aid of an oxygen tube he's expected to recover which is good by the way um and return to his home and that's what his wife told the oklahomian uh, she is still surprised that he became sick in the first place after 18 months of doing everything we could to avoid it um, <laughs> I got the answer for you. You're just not going to like it. Okay. I um, mean, a lot of y'all are not going to like it as more stories like this, uh, break, break out. Um, yeah, you're doing everything you could, but it's just everything that they told you to do. So, so this is what happened, guys. You were sold a dream. I, I hate that. That look, everybody gets bamboozled every now and then. It happens, right? Sometimes you got to cut your losses. The government organizations, the alphabet organizations, as well as the public health experts, led you guys fucking astray. They sold y'all a dream, okay? They sold you a dream, and they sold you a lie. They sold you something. They said that this was what was going to happen, um, and it didn't happen. And I hate to hear stories like this because you guys look to these people as um, definitely in the medical industry or the medical community as people that would never steer you astray. They would never do you wrong because it's all about caring for patients. It's all about caring for other people and the health of them. But this would, I would hope, start to make you guys. I don't care where you're at politically. But at least ask questions. And that's what we were prevented from doing, man, before, including experts that maybe came to different conclusions. They had the same credentials, but they were supposed hacks because they didn't come to that conclusion that the other public health experts were coming to. Look, they lied or something is fucked. But the fact that you couldn't even ask questions because you re- either refused to ask questions or maybe you were scared that you were going to get silenced because of it is what got us to this point. And it was a scientific, right? Well, you got all these people doing some of which these measures don't even make sense. Like it's not been proven. It's not any random control trial for the most part, even with the mass thing, man, that is proven without a shadow of a doubt that, that this is effective anyway, but you do it because they told you to do it. You social distance because they told you to do it. Not because it makes any sense. We shared a story earlier this week where the FDA, uh, former FDA commissioner 
had admitted that, uh, that as well regarding the social distancing. It's completely arbitrary. It's like this whole six feet shit came out of nowhere. But they told you to do it. And they sold you. you it's, it's like there's a lot of people, and maybe it's because the propaganda worked. But there's a lot of people who look at the government agencies, and it's not just with, with health. But I think health certainly is high up there. But it's with a lot of things where they say, well, they look at it from a naive perspective. And that's, well, why would they say that if it weren't true? And if you're operating like that or under that, you're in trouble. It's the government, you know, as cliche as that might sound. They do things that are not necessarily conducive to what they said. It happens all the time. It's happened over the course of human history and has led to some of the greatest human atrocities. But I think this could have been avoided. If we were able to ask questions honestly and there was open dialogue about this, the, um, the multiple vaccines that were out there. These are, you, you know, your T's get crossed, your I's get dotted, but that wasn't allowed, which is why they get to get it wrong. WHO early on wrote off that this could have been a potential lab leak out of China, Wuhan. He wrote it off. A year after the fact, General Tedros of the WHO says, well, we probably shouldn't have done that. This pandemic has been a lot of people trying to speak things into existence and wanting things to be true. And because they want them to be true so bad, you, the cognitive dissonance is obviously there. But the willing to accept what doesn't make sense as truth has been the demise of a lot of people. Now, of course, in the story that we just read, I'm glad that this person is expected to fully recover. But I hope that person comes out of that. And it ain't about getting the jab or not. It's about questioning that you did everything that you said that they told you to do. And you still ended up in, in the fucking hospital with the COVID. You and you're absolutely within your right to ask those questions. And those are necessary questions. You just watched a clip from my podcast for Canon sake. Catch us live at 12 p.m. throughout the week over at youtube.com slash youngripper59 and follow us over at odyssey.com slash at youngripper59. If you want to watch the entire video cast after the show is over, just be sure to become a member on the YouTube channel. Of course, the full audio portion of the podcast is available for free on all major digital platforms or just visit forcanonsake.com.